So is the crash over and has the stock market reached a bottom? That's what we're talking about in this week's edition of Liquid Options TV, a weekly show to help you with your options trading with a new episode posted each week right here on YouTube. My name is Eric, and by the end of this video, you're going to understand the number one thing I'm looking for to tell if the market bottom is in. But I'd also like to know what you think about the current state of the stock market, and I'm going to be checking the comment section. So tell me what you think about the market in the comment section below this video on YouTube. And if this is the first time you stop by the channel, be sure to subscribe and you really need to click that little uh, notification bell if you don't wanna miss an episode or even some chart posts. I'm gonna talk about that in another video. So all that and more coming right up. Before we dive into the charts, you need to know that everything presented in this video and on this channel is for informational purposes only, and that I am not a financial advisor of any kind. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and look at the IWM. And I think that this is the leading indicator that you want to use. And by indicator, I don't mean the Bollinger Bands or the RSI or any other technical indicator or even a moving average. But what we want to look at is other ETFs that are giving us a clue to, as the total market. Now, you know that I pretty much trade SPX mainly, and I think that's the best indicator for the overall stock market. But the IWM and the NASDAQ, some of these at TLT and some of these other ETFs can also be sort of a, can give you a tell. And the, the real one that I wanna point out here is IWM. Really for a majority of the part of the year, the run up we've had was led by IWM. And I wanna point out, that IWM really broke down first. And that's what I'm kind of looking for to sort of tell me the rally is going to resume. Otherwise, I think we're going to stay in a big sideways chop fest until, uh, you know, we'll see until the next year. So let's take a look at IWM. And I have a couple of arrows here. The first one is on uh, September 26th. And let me zoom in a little bit. And the reason why this is significant is from a Bollinger Band perspective, IWM was you can see this is the 52 week high and it started to consolidate very normal and the consolidation puts into a uh puts the indicator here of the bollinger band squeeze now i am using just the default settings here uh which is a 20 period moving average that's the 20 day moving average that's that blue line and then you have the two standard deviation bands up and down and on september 26 uh we actually started to get a uh, a squeeze breakout to the down, downside. Now, a lot of these are have been kind of short-lived uh, in the bull market, but this one actually started to play out. And you're going to see this other date, October 8th. That, well, you'll see why this is significant in a minute. But on September 26th, the Russell started to break down and then really accelerate. So let's go ahead and take a look at the S&P and see if this lines up. Now let me let me show you what I mean by this was the leading indicator. So remember that date, 926. We're gonna switch over to, I'm just gonna look at SPY. And 926 on SPY is this arrow, and I'm, I'll zoom in here a little bit. So just think about that for a second. The Russell led us on the way up, and on 926, uh, the SPY was also in a, a little bit of a Bollinger Band squeeze. It actually peaked a little later. Remember, the Russell had peaked. Let me go back to that IWM. Um, there it is. Sorry, IWM had peaked on uh, August 31st, and SPY peaked on September 19th. So, just from the peak situation, the SPY at this point is sort of behind the Russell by you know a, a couple weeks, right? Well. On September 26th, that yellow era, this is when the Russell started to experience a Bollinger Band squeeze, sort of breakout to the downside. And it wasn't until October 8th until the S&P started to follow. And then we had the big October swoosh. And then we're putting in this, you know, we'll talk about the bottoming pattern here. And so this is really what I'm looking for. If things get hunky-dory again and the market's looking up and, and maybe, you know, we'll see what the Fed does. Maybe the uh, Powell will put one more rate hike in in December and say, you know what, I think we're going to pause for now. And then we'll kind of see what the market does. But what I'm going to be looking for is for the Russell to put in the, the bottoming or complete this bottoming formation. And let's talk about that real quick. And if that happens, then I think the S&P is going to follow. And so as someone who primarily trades the S&P via SPX options, 
I'm kind of interested in what the Russell does, even though I'm not going to uh, really trade the Russell as much. Uh, you can, and it's, I'm not saying you shouldn't. It's just, you know, for, for how I uh, tend to trade. So let's look at this. The other thing I have on here is the Bollinger Band percent B. And what, what this really does is, is just kind of tell you where the closing prices are in relation to the band. So just a quick indicator tutorial. It's more of a reference. It's not a huge uh, factor, but there's a, some interesting things here. So when when a, a stock or something closes outside of the Bollinger Band, the percent B is going to be negative because it's it's you know in between is from zero percent here to a hundred percent. So if it closes below, it's negative, and if it closes above, it would be um, it would be over a hundred. So that's sort of the percent. So between the bands is a hundred percent, and this you know it's interesting the way that this works because as the bands narrow, the percentages will. Uh, continue to, to adapt. And the whole thing about Bollinger Bands is that, that that they're adaptive volatility bands. So anyway, so what we're looking at here is uh, the Russell, you know, we we had a few closes below the band here when, it, when we had the volatility breakout on September 26th. We swooshed lower, the market fell suit. And you can see that the zero line here, the percent B was kind of, you know, we were oversold and it stayed oversold. Remember, this isn't, you know, you don't necessarily want to uh, go against a volatility breakout. Um, and we made this low and then we came in and kind of made another low. And the interesting part here is even though we made another low in price, the indicator did not make another low because the volatility had started to lessen. And this is something that that I personally have kind of, am, am really trying to factor in. I think it's a big deal. We talk about divergences and things with various indicators, uh, but as a volatility trader, and if you trade options, ultimately, or if you're an option seller, even if you're a buyer, I guess, if you're an option seller of any sorts, butterflies, you know, credit spreads, calendar spreads, um, you you have to understand that you are ultimately trading volatility because that's part of what makes up the prices of options. So we had a, a you know a new low, but the indicator started to turn around. And really, what that means is that we're still closing below the band, but but we're not closing below the band as deep as we were during the initial swoosh. So volatility is starting to wane. You can see that basically in the moving average. The moving average is starting to flat, flatten out. So we're we're potentially looking at a bottoming formation. And I'm going to switch over to the SPY real quick where I have this drawn. And, and what we're looking at is potential. And you can see the um, same thing here. Whoops. Right. Price makes a new low. Lower high. Lower low. Indicator is starting to turn up. So there's a there's a bullish divergence here, and again the moving average is trading sideways. So we're we're looking at a potential bottom. Um, I wouldn't say it's complete, but what I'm looking for is for the Russell to lead the way up. And right now it's not. Right now the S&P is closing above its 20-day moving average. We do have a potential reverse head and shoulders here, or inverse head and shoulders. And if we close back above 280, this is about 2,800, then I think the market's going to be okay. But I'm going to want the Russell to lead the way. And right now, it's about even. So this is something that I'm looking at. I'm following the Russell. Until then, I'm playing this market in, in a way that is, you know, basically shorting rallies and, and uh, you know, going long against declines in relation to the Bollinger Bands. I'm going to talk about that in a, in a different video. Um, I do have a Bollinger Band and RSI strategy guide, although I've actually pulled my RSI off because what I'm finding is that when the RSI is overbought and you're at the upper band, they kind of coincide and there, there isn't a lot of differences there. But I do have this guide and you can kind of extrapolate from that as you will. If you want to look in the, um, the description here, I have a, um, a link if you want to down download the Bollinger Band RSI strategy guide. And um, it talks about if you're you know looking to trade credit spread. So check the description for that. So heading into next week, uh, you know, it's 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 a Thanksgiving holiday. It's a shortened week. I'm not expecting any significant moves. We did get some positive news that it seems like China and the U.S. may be on the road to some kind of trade deal. And I think that that could actually boost the Russell because I think the tariff talk has been a problem. So with the market having a shortened week and vol volume is probably going to drop, 
I would expect the market to either drift sideways or potentially start to drift up. Probably nothing significant, but hey, who knows? Anything comes out of Washington or the Fed or whatever um, could could sway the market. I'm going to be kind of taking the week off, lightly watching the market. And probably, just so you know, there probably won't be an episode next week. We'll see if I can squeeze one in during the holidays. But if I don't talk to you, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. And be sure to check the description for other option trading resources. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Thank <laughs> you.